Hi, I'm Sal McCaglano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University, former Merchant Mariner, and an adjunct instructor in Maritime Industry Policy with the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Welcome to my new office at Campbell University. Just got promoted to the chair of my department. But the big news, besides that, is this. Ever Given has completed her offload in Felix Stowe. The long nightmare is over. The vessel is finally empty of cargo. Uh, this is the video from Felix Stowe of the ship's arrival into port. You'll see how empty she looks in these videos. You'll see just a couple of rows loaded with containers. Most of the containers went off in Rotterdam uh, for either distribution within Rotterdam. Uh, some cargo was transloaded over to the Ever Util, a smaller vessel for shipment to Hamburg. Uh, and then other cargo was basically kept in the port and transloaded onto other vessels for further distribution. Normally coming in the Felix Stowe, she would have more cargoes on board. She would have outbound cargo heading back over to Asia. But this is her coming in. It's good, actually, it's a great example of how they load these vessels, how they use these individual rows to load for specific ports. Uh, it's a very unique load. You typically don't see vessels in this type of condition of around because of the hogging and because of the, the weight stress on the vessel. But she can compensate for that through her ballast tanks. You'll see how high she's riding right now. Uh, she's coming in extremely light at this time. Uh, but this is a uh, obviously a huge story finishing up the saga that started way back in March. March 23rd is when Ever Given went aground uh, in the Suez. Took six days to eventually free her and then she shifted over to the Great Bitter Lake and then sat there for about 100 days while under arrest by the Egyptian government because of disputes and how much money Evergreen and the ship's owners would pay them. We still don't know what that final resolution was. Uh, initially, Egypt was asking for almost a billion dollars, 916 million. They came down to 500 million. Uh, the counter offer from the companies was approximately 150 million. So we're assuming obviously it's somewhere in between there. Uh, you'll notice a couple of things on uh, Ever Given as she comes in. Uh, when she swings around, you get an image of her bow. You'll see some of the markings from where she grounded. Uh, that forward part of the vessel from the uh, in on evergreen forward was all aground. You can see how the bow is scuffed up there, especially on the bulbous bow right there. They're shifting her, spinning her around right now, trying to get her into place using tugs. Again, I'm not 100% sure her bow thrusters are operational or not because of the damage she suffered. So she's got tugs on her right now. You'll see the tugs kind of dancing around her, trying to check that motion, stop the swing and then push her up against the berth here so that she can offload. She'd gotten off most of those containers in, in Rotterdam, uh, but now she's getting it off in Felixstowe. This is the last load that she had on board before she's going to head, we thought, into a shipyard. Uh, initial reports and everything I read said she was heading over to Dunkirk uh, to basically uh, go into a shipyard. But one of the things that we're seeing right now is she is not going to Dunkirk. Here she is right now off in the anchorage off of Felix Stowe. This is Felix Stowe right here. Let's go ahead and zoom this out here for a little bit for you. There you go. There's the English Channel. If you never sailed through the English Channel, it's, 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 it's a busy little place. But up here in Felix Stowe, she's sitting at an anchorage and her AIS is showing an ETA of August 17th to the Suez. So perhaps she's gotten permission and, and the damage is not severe enough that she can go and head to the Far East for a shipyard in the Far East. Dunkirk or a European yard would have been a temporary probably fix. Uh, this is probably looking at a uh, much larger, uh, maybe long-term issue to get her out. Uh, not sure yet, we're gonna keep an eye on this. Lots of stories coming in here, obviously. Uh, BBC was running this quite a lot with Evergins, Evergiven's cargo unloaded uh, there. Uh, lots of people coming to come see her for obvious reasons. All right, my favorite story that came out, I was just, again, we've, we've covered this story for quite a bit, and a lot of the stories are great to come out of Ever Given, but this is a great one, was part of the cargo on board was a Tyrannosaurus Rex, not a real one, but a Tyrannosaurus Rex for a miniature golf course. Kingsway Golf Center in Melbourne, Cambridgeshire, we'll go with that, is looking forward to finally adding two new dinosaur models to Jurassic Link's crazy golf course. 
It said it already cleared its place around the 17th, 18th holes for the giant Tyrannosaurus Rex model, nicknamed Dino, before it became stuck on Evergiven. The course is also waiting for the arrival of, of Dino's four meter wide pterodactyl friend. So two dinosaurs have been blocked on board Ever Given. I've, I've gotten lots of notes about what's on board Ever Given. Uh, I can't recall anyone ever telling me that there were dinosaurs uh, locked on board. Uh, her arrival in Felixstowe uh, was, was, was really impressive. This is her actually leaving uh, empty of containers. You don't like, again, see that too often. She's going to be an extremely light load uh, going out. So her marks are going to be up. You can see the marks uh, against her hull there from basically sitting in the mud for so long and then sitting in the Great Bitter Lake for as long as she did. It's going to be interesting to see what the next step is. Uh, great story here. I enjoyed this story a lot from BBC on people coming down to see it. One of the big things that I've done with this channel, what's going on with shipping, was it kind of morphed out of my guest appearances on news shows when Ever Given was grounded. And I think one of the things that Ever Given unintentionally did was raise a lot of attention to the shipping industry. And so a lot of people headed down to Felixstowe to see it. When she was in Rotterdam, she was a, uh, a site. There were tours going in into the harbor there to go see it. So you, know, you get these comments here. It's pretty impressive to come see. Uh, you get to see her. Everyone's a bit amazed at, at her size. Always huge. Uh, I love this one right here. Alan Cutting from Ipswich came to see the Ever Given with his granddaughter, Greta, who was visit visiting from Bournemouth. We've come down to this part of the beach, especially to see it. He was surprised how empty the Ever Given was when it arrived. Mr. Cutting said he's seen a lot of container ships arrive at the dock, but describes this as I was there moment because of the amount the ship has been in the news. But his granddaughter does not seem as interested. She's more concerned with throwing stones in the sea, he says. Uh, sorry, kid. And everything, but that's what you get for choosing Hufflepuff. I, I got to say, that's 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 a questionable decision right there to begin with. And then we go on here, and we just have some more about this uh, tremendous vessel, just an amazing capability. And one of the things that we've seen post Ever Given's grounding is number one, ship size is continuing to grow. There are 24,000, 25,000 box vessels on order, while Ever Given was grounded. Evergreen, the parent company, ordered vessels larger than ever given. Uh, so that did not de uh, deter them. Uh, I've got a video for tomorrow that I'm working on talking about the, the current sh shipping situation. And there's a shortage in capacity. So vessels are going to be keep being ordered right now to fill this need. Uh, the other thing that, that's going on, too, at the same exact time is uh, as ever given is offloaded, the insurance claims are still being leveled against her. This story is by no mean over. Uh, there'll be numerous insurance claims against Ever Given, Evergreen, the UK p &I Club, the Japanese owners, you name it. This ship caused a massive disruption in global shipping. And one of the things that you see, if you just even go to the BBC side, just hit the shipping industry, you'll see story after story. This is the hijacking that was in the UAE yesterday. And just talking about these, these, the importance of shipping in the world today. What happens with Ever Given? We're going to continue to watch and find out. Uh, she's going to be a focus for me for a long time. Uh, I've watched her now for quite a bit. And she's really uh, an interesting story, I think. She really demonstrates the growth in container ships, these ultra-large container ships. We see the demand for them, the ever-growing need for goods and products to move around the world. We see that right now. And we're getting ready to see a big crisis, I think, in the world of global shipping as ports in East Asia begin to shut down over COVID lockdowns. And we already have backlogs in ports. Uh, these vessels, you'll see a, a series of vessels right here uh, waiting to get in, for example, sitting here at the Harwich Anchor, uh, waiting to get in here uh, to basically offload. And again, uh, this is the, 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 the demand for goods out there that's ever growing. What happens next? We never know. We shall see. But just wanted to give the update that, that, that the gnomes and dinosaurs have arrived in Great Britain. So hopefully gardens and, and uh, golf centers all over England now can rejoice that Ever Given has arrived and, and offloaded. 
So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit subscribe. Go ahead and hit the bell to be alerted about new videos when, when new prehistoric animals arrive at their destinations. Also, hit a thumbs up, leave a comment, share with your friends, do whatever you like with the channel. Uh, I feel, feel free to, to, to uh, share and, and distribute as much as you like. And until our next broadcast, this is Sal signing off. Hope you like the new office.